something that needs a little fixing on Bar Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric here at Far Point Restorations. So we're going to make another Volvo video. I've got two that I'll be putting out uh, back to back or I guess close to back to back. The Volvo, which is not a great car to begin with, has suffered an electrical issue. I went off the mountain for a while, left the car parked, came back to it, battery is dead. Not unusual, you leave a Volvo sitting too long. There's a lot of uh, key off draw going on with those cars. But I get a jump box out, I fire the thing up, and what do we have? We have a problem. Uh, the fan won't turn off. And not the radiator fan, but the interior cabin fan. These cars actually had a recall for the radiator fan doing the same thing. And if your fan is doing that, replace it immediately because it will actually burn down your house. That was a recall because it caused house fires if a car was parked in the garage. Anyway, that was not the case here. That's already been fixed. The interior fan was on. There is a function on Volvos called afterblow, and it's to clean the moisture out of the uh, evaporator so I was like well maybe it's just tricked and thinking that so that was not the problem anyway I got the car fired back up got it back up here to the house hooked it up to the Vita program here that I have at the house because I do do a lot of work on Volvos unfortunately and no codes no no CAN bus issues which is kind of what I was leaning towards no climate control module issues so I'm like oh boy what do we got here what has happened is this piece apparently has gone bad why it went bad randomly in a parking lot. We'll never know. But this is our resistor, our blower motor resistor pack. When you change the dial on your fan, you have high, which is a full 12 volts or system voltage. And anytime you move it down to a slower speed, you are creating a reaction in this, which causes resistance. The resistance, they're taking voltage away from the fan, lowers the speed of the fan. That's what this huge heat sink is because when we use resistance, we create heat. Anyway, there's also a small computer module in here. And somehow or another, this thing appears to have gone bad because when I uh, tested this out, the, old, the one on the car, I'm getting some weird readings. So today I'm going to show you how to replace the fan motor on your Volvo P2. That would be S60s, V70s, and XC70s. And I'm also going to show you, for those interested, that once you take the fan out, you can replace this. It's literally like one more bolt to take apart swap it out, put it back in, and hopefully that'll fix the problem on this Volvo. All we're going to need to do this job is a Torx T25, and um, it's a bit tight. It's up underneath the passenger side, but it's not a terrible job. You're going to unplug two plugs. You're going to remove the few bolts or few uh, screws that are in there. You're going to drop that fan out, and we're going to take a look at it. So let's do it. All right, so like my, my battery's already unhooked because I have this problem, but it's probably not a bad idea to go ahead and unhook the negative battery cable. If you haven't uh, seen how to do that, I will show you in another video. Now, let's move up to the front passenger door. All right, here we are. So first step is to gain access to the fan area. We've got a plastic cover that's there, and we're gonna take out the two T25s that are below. And that's it. I, I'll show the rest of this from underneath, but this, this part here, you literally have one bolt right there and one bolt right there. They're T25s, Torx T25. So that's all you'll need tool-wise to do this job, I think. I think you actually need maybe an 8 or a 10 once we get in there, but I'll, I'll let you know what happened. So next step for me is I'm going to get the cell phone camera because you can get a little closer up in here, and I'll show you the rest of the job. Let's do it. All right, this next part here is not actually necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and remove the glove box. There's a T25 there and another one there and then two up here on top. And the only reason I'm taking these this out is to get a little better access and to give you a little better view of what I'm doing. You can do this job without doing this. It just makes it a little tighter. If you're working at a dealership or you're on flat rate, feel free to skip this part. But for me, I'm kind of relaxed. So <laughs> this is my own car, so I don't have, I'm not in that big of a hurry this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that, and then we'll move on. All right, once you've got the two bolts up on the top, and then you've got three on the sides, you are ready to pull that out, except you got to unhook two electrical connectors, one here and one there, right there. I'll go ahead and unplug those. We'll get it out of the way, and we'll move on to the actual fan part. Again, not necessary. 
I'm showing this in case somebody ever wants to remove a glove box, but it, it, you can see it didn't ac gain access to anything down here. It just kind of opens it up a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing with that area. And it gives a little more headroom. All right, so we've got our plugs unplugged. And now we're down here at the base of the ra uh, radio, the base of the fan. This right here needs to be unplugged. You just push that in. Sometimes it's a little hard to do these things one-handed, but come on, baby. Yeah, I'll have to put the camera down for that, but that we're going to do two things. I'm going to unplug this, and then I'm going to pull this carpet back. I'm going to pull it down. You don't have to remove the carpet. You just kind of have to pull that down out of the way. So let me do that, and we'll move on. With the plug unplugged and the carpet folded up, we are ready to get into this. You've got a water line right here. It's like a drain line. You're just going to pull that off if you can. Again, I'm going to have to do this stuff with both hands. You can't really do this one-handed, but you're going to pull that off. And then we have three bolts. And they're not really visible, but they are brass-colored bolts. And there's three. There's one on the front, one on the side, and one that's nearly impossible to access. It's in the back. Some people will say you have to remove the uh, foam insulation here, this, this matting. But you don't have to do that. You just have to kind of work around it. You can kind of help you know, some people cut out a little section, whatever you got to do to get to it. But you don't want to break the case. So you do have to do it. And it's going to be a trick wiggling it all out of there. But it's really not that uh, hard a job. It's just a little frustrating because, you know, the engineers could have pushed this around just a smidge or made the fan a little low profile and, it's always interesting when you look at cars, the way they're designed, and you think, what were the engineers thinking? And usually the answer is they weren't. Um, and that that's just my observation. But there's one of the bolts right there, one of the nuts, one of the screws. You know, you say it three, three times, whatever. And the other one's hidden. You can see it right there shining. That's the second one. The third one that's on that far side, you just can't see it. It's It's back there, though. And maybe that's it. You can maybe kind of make it out a little bit. Oh, there you go. So I think there's four all, all together. And that the back one is the one that is just tough to get to. But it can be done. All right. Let's do it. Okay. Once you've got all the bolts out, and I was wrong, it is actually five. One, two, three, four, five that you have to get out. It looks like I've got some water intrusion on there. There's some rust on that one, which may explain why the resistor went bad. Well, once you've got it out, here you go, and you've got to just kind of wiggle it. Again, I didn't have to remove the glove box, and I certainly didn't have to remove the carpet. I've seen some videos where guys are removing the passenger seat and the whole carpet and everything, and you're like, Wait, what are you doing, dude? But that, and you can see water right there. So now I know why mine failed. We'll have to figure out why it's flooding there. It's probably a drain that's clogged. We did get a lot of rain while I was away, so I bet you that's it. And while we have it here... To replace the resistor, I've got that right there, one bolt that I'm going to have to take loose. But I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to replace this. We'll take it to the bench. And then we'll also pop the hood and figure out what is going on with the leak. There's your hole. And I told you, this is not a bad job. I think dealership paid less than an hour for this job. And I would say even filming, which I haven't filmed every second of it, it has like 20 minutes at best. Well, let's do it. All right, here we are on the bench. You can see our fan, and you can see the cover that's on that fan. So we got to get the cover off of the fan. So I'm going to undo that one screw right there. Again, all this, the whole job, start to finish, is T25 Torx bits. And Well, you can see the water in there. Holy cow, look at that. That's not good at all. There is our other, this is our actual uh, fan lines here going in. So we're going to remove that right there. Squeeze it. I might push down on that. And wiggle that out of there. A little bit rusty is what it's looking like. There we go. And then to remove, if you're going to go and do what I'm doing, or just remove your fan, you've got one too right here. We'll remove those as well. So the mystery has definitely been solved <laughs> as far as why my uh, resistor pack shorted out. So I have another problem I'll have to take care of. And that's probably just a matter of cleaning out a drain up on the, on the, 
on the roof, the cowl there, has a drain on the driver's side and on the passenger side. And if I were going to guess, one of those is clearly expired. So I'm going to wiggle this a little bit. We'll get this pried off of here. And just be careful when you when you get it out. You have to slide, you know, that down through. Come on, baby. I was hoping it would slide out easily. Usually they do, but this is clearly got some issues here. So I'll work on that for a second. We'll get that loose and then I will replace this as well. Hopefully we will have a solution to our problems very quickly. Normally when you remove these, you don't really care because the fan is getting replaced. So if the old fan gets damaged or whatnot, it's not a big deal, but I am trying to be delicate. This is, if you've never seen me work, this is the delicate version of me. All right, we've got it loose, and that exposes the second resistor screw here that I showed you earlier. She's ugly. Oh, my gosh. I'm surprised the fan isn't making noise. And I might squirt a little bit of lube in there because it probably will be after we're done. So there's our old resistor. Oh, boy. Rusty and wet. Not good. And you can see looks like some damage there. Here's our new resistor. We'll make sure that they are the same, and they are. I'm going to get some rags. We'll wipe out the moisture that's in there. Now, if you're watching this video, and this is the first video from mine that you have watched, I have been a Volvo mechanic since 1995, 1994 maybe it was. And I worked at the dealership and then at a private Volvo only repair shop for many years and then we worked on all European cars at another shop but I was the Volvo guy at that shop so I worked on Volvos and got paid to work on these things for a long time so this era especially I was there when these rolled off the assembly line and I was there the day the last one was sold so it's kind of cool to still be able to work on them occasionally since I own one even though it's probably time to get rid of it, and I think I will be getting rid of this one shortly. It, the 2001 models specifically were just absolute garbage. This one is living up to its namesake. But we're going to install our new resistor pack here, our little module. Right, and then we're going to slide this back into place. And that is like... So I believe we want to make sure. So you can see here, there's little, these little foam strips kind of hold things thing together. You know what else I'm going to do while well, I've got it apart? I'm going to spray a little lube in there to water displacement 40, I believe is the actual name of WD-40. And in this case, we need some water displacement because this thing is getting a lot of water in it. So I'll put a little bit of spray on the rear bearing. I'm going to spray a little bit inside too. Normally this is not something you would need to do. But since she's got so much water in it, I'm betting that's a good idea. Okay, once we've got that done, we'll go ahead and reassemble. We've got to slide this up through here. And we want to get it back into place, so I will slowly push this back down. It is kind of a trick because you want your holes to line up with the holes on that, and that can be yeah, a bit of a pain. If I can get that out of there. I am going through the right hole. There we go. Looks like we're actually really close. There we go. Like we're a little bit off on that side you have to be able to line up your screw holes there but we can adjust that we can just pry a little bit there we go a little bit more there we go you can see that lined up so i'll start one make sure the other one lines up before i tighten either one this is a trick that i always try to share on every automotive video i make never tighten anything all the way until you have all of your nuts bolts or screws started because once you tighten one down, there's no room for anything to wiggle around.
Beautiful. Plug that back in. Okay. And now this rear cover also has a bunch of nasty in it, so I'll wipe all that out of there. I was surprised to see that much moisture in there, but I guess that explains the problems that I've been having, right? Now, you can leave this off if you want to. See, this one only has one screw going through it, and it might give access to these a little easier. But let me, uh, I'll go ahead and put that back on and show you what I'm talking about here. So, once it's snapped back into place, okay, so we have one screw here, one screw here, one screw here. One screw here and one screw here, just so you know the location. So here's our drain line. This is, goes up against the uh, top of the case, and here's our main plug right there. Okay. This fan has definitely been replaced at least once in its life. I don't recall the cage being black on the originals. I think they were like an amber color. But, uh, no, I don't see the brand on it. And there have been times that it's made noise, but uh, I don't like fixing what ain't broke. So for my own cars, I'll leave them be. That's it, my friends. It's time to go ahead and reinstall it again. Only going to need this. I've got my Craftsman T25 made in the USA, old school. I wonder how many of these fans this screwdriver has taken in and taken off. Pretty wild. But let's go ahead and install it. I'm very hopeful, and it looks very likely that this, being soaking wet and probably destroyed with corrosion on the inside, is why my fan would not shut off, even with the key out. Let's do it. Here we are back at the car. You can see the position that I have this at. Right? I hope you're under seeing how that sits. So there's our plug, there's our drain, and there's our hook that goes up. That's kind of how it goes in. You're just going to take it and kind of slide it back into place. And then I like to put just two or three bolts in on the front side, the easy ones. And then after I've got the easy ones in, I go back and get the hard ones in. I tighten the hard ones all the way down once I've got them all started. And then move back to the front and tighten up these three that are up here. So that is how I'm going to go about this. Once we get it in, before I go any further, before I... Um, put my glove box back in if you've taken yours out before I put the carpet. Before I do anything else, I'm going to plug everything in. I'm going to hook my battery back up and I'm going to verify that my fan isn't rubbing on the case and that my fix actually fixed. And if that's the case, then we go ahead and we finish our repairs. So let's do that. Okay, the fan is reinstalled, just plugged in. And I'm going to go to the back again because mine would not shut off. And I'm going to hook the battery up. If it doesn't start blowing, that's a good sign. If it doesn't start blowing, we'll sit in the pat in the driver's seat and we'll run it through the paces to make sure that everything is still functional. If that works out, well, it's time to put all the covers back on and wrap this job up. Okay, moment of truth. Hey, hey, I don't hear a fan. Hopefully that's a good thing. All right, so here we are. I've got my key. Go ahead and turn the key on. And let's run through... Beautiful. No weird noises. And that is all I'm looking for. We can continue the reassembly. So getting it back together is actually really easy, especially if you don't take out the carpet. We do want to hook our little line up here. Stuff that back onto the drain hose there so our feet don't get wet and then we're just going to push our carpet back into place right and then if you have decided to take your glove box out now is the time to do the opposite let's go ahead and reinstall that oh once we've got our glove back once we've got our glove box back into place it's down to that two more screws and we're done with this job let's get her done and that's it, my friends. That's it. So what did that take? Uh, I probably edited it down about five minutes. In real time, that was far less than an hour, maybe 30 minutes start to finish. And that included replacing the regulator. Man, if you pay me to do this, this, as I recall, was close to a $500 job at the dealership. Probably now in adjusted dollars, probably more like seven or 750. The part that I bought that I needed 
<clears throat> was a whopping $27 with free shipping off of eBay. The fan I looked at because I thought, well, maybe I should just go ahead and do it. It was like $51 with free shipping, $49 with free shipping. There was some for $80. Maybe it's a little better fan. I don't know, but I don't care because I didn't need it. So what do we got, all right? Let's say for $80 or $85 or $90 or $100, if you have to buy the Torx T25 screwdriver to do the whole job, you're in it for $100 bucks versus $700 at the dealership, which means you get to pocket or keep the $600 in between. There is no reason that anybody, man, woman, or child, can't do this job. It is one whole tool, one screwdriver to get the job done. And I hope you will look at this video and decide you can do it for yourself. That's it for today, my friends. I'll see you next time.